I happen to have a particular fondness for bioelectronics because uh, my wife has two cochlear implants, and so she's sort of like the bionic woman. Her, her hearing was restored after 50 years of deafness by uh, an implant that goes into the cochlea, and uh, the electrodes touch the auditory nerve and are uh, fed by the implant, but signals come through her, through her head, through a magnetic connection, from a speech processor that's about the size of a mobile. That thing is taking sound in. It does a Fourier transform to figure out which frequencies are present. It then decides which of the electrodes inside the cochlea it's going to stimulate artificially. The brain interprets those signals as sound. So she hears more or less normally. Doesn't hear music very well because it's a very crude uh, signaling system, but speech is great. So she uses the phone and you know, listens to books on tape. Uh, she carries an FM transmitter with her. So she, if she were in the audience today, I'd be wearing a little FM transmitter. She could hear me from 150 feet away. So that's bioelectronics, and it's getting more and more elaborate. We're seeing op optical implants. We're seeing spinal implants. So if you were going to go into a space that would have a huge positive impact for people with various disabilities, bioelectronics is not a bad place to be. Studying uh, pharmacology, for example, inventing uh, new treatments, new drug treatments based on molecules that you invent as opposed to discover, all that stuff is there. It's just, well, it's a whole new world waiting for people to explore. <laughs>